Curiosity Stream has thousands of documentary films and shows available on demand on any device. We're the Netflix for nerds, the Hulu for history buffs, the Disney Plus for the scientist in us. There sure are a lot of streaming services, aren't there? Curiosity Stream is the one you definitely need if you're the type to nature doc and chill, if you're an armchair astronaut, if you prefer physics to psychics, or perhaps you know a precocious paleontologist. Go to CuriosityStream.com to learn more and sign up today. Coming September 1st, Rewind 9-11. Today we've had a national tragedy. An incredible plane crash into the World Trade Center. A look back at the tragedy of that day. Another explosion has taken place at the Pentagon. It became very apparent that what was happening was terrorism. Terrorism. Fox News presents... Rewind 9-11. People who knock these buildings down will hear all of us soon. Listen on Odyssey. Live from downtown San Francisco, this is 95.7 The Game. Going to be a steamer today, everybody. Going to be an absolute steamer out there. Took Snickers for a walk. It was 63 degrees when things started. When it ended, I was sweating like a dog. It is going to be hot, so be careful, have some fun, be safe, and take 95.7 The Game along with you wherever you go, whether it's on terrestrial radio or you use the Odyssey app. You've got Dan Devone and Jim Cozumore together with you. It's an unbelievable morning. Dan, I can't believe how hot it is where I live. It's beautiful here in San Francisco. Well, I'm coming to your house. I'm coming to visit you then. Let's go. We sit on the deck and we can watch Ev recuperate from a strong week in San Diego where he uh, apparently had a cocktail or two. But, (laughs) you know, it's always a good barometer if it's sunny and hot in San Francisco. Rest assured, it's smoking everywhere else, right? Boy, that's uh, absolutely true. I'll tell you, I'll I'll head on down there. We'll go to the Dolphin, do a couple of laps. (laughs) Oh, yeah, uh, right. And then uh, we'll uh, sit out on the uh, balcony, and I'll make you a couple of my smoke Manhattans. How does that sound? Uh, no, that works. Although a Manhattan this sort of weather, I don't know. Maybe, you know, maybe that's too heavy of a drink. You're right. Maybe I'll go in Army Navy. Uh, maybe I'll do a little gin drink, a little sweeter gin drink. It doesn't matter, but we're, we'll be ready to go. And we got a heck of a lot of stuff going on today. College football starts today, Double D. I heard that. I just heard uh, the program prior to us, Hawaii and UCLA. Man, is it? Is it upon us already, Jim? It is upon us already. It, in fact, it starts, I think, the first game. It either happened last night or it happens today. There's a Big Ten game, a Big Ten game with Illinois and Nebraska going at it today. So they're already in conference wow. play in the Big Ten. Wow, wow. And, of oh. course, the landscape of college football changed as we speak with the SEC just running away with everybody with this new Super League. So I don't know if you want to talk about that, but that's just, I mean – football, I don't know where it's headed at the collegiate level, but, I mean, you know, we saw that attempt by the Super League out there in, in, in Europe, and you certainly can detail that better than I, but I don't know. Are we looking towards something that, like, along those likes when we talk about the NCAA and college football as we knew it? Boy, it sure seems like the Pac-12 and the ACC and the Big Ten are aligning in a way that will counter what the SEC is trying to do by gobbling everybody up and maybe developing a Super League of their own. Um, it, it, it's... It's fascinating and interesting to see. I know Northern California might not be the best place to talk college football, but it is something that's on the huge landscape. And and I will say this, and this happens, I think, more so in the Midwest and on the East. The start of college football, which means the NFL is right around the corner, isn't that kind of the, the sense of now you're going from summer to fall, now things are starting to turn, kids are going back to school. Isn't that the change of season? that natural change for you as a sports fan as well, Dan? Yeah, it's Labor Day, the Jerry Lewis telethon back in the day, and you knew that you were turning that page. Here comes that little bite in the air. Probably, in all honesty, my favorite time of the year, just that sort of transition into fall. Days are getting a little bit shorter while it's still warm enough, and maybe because growing up here in San Francisco, your best months are in September and October. You get those Indian summers, but it does not get any better than this, Jim. Sounds like you and I were simpatico. It's the exact same thing. You start to turn the calendar. You get to the Jerry Lewis telethon. You knew you were going to school the next day. After the Monday, the final day, when all the big money comes in at the Jerry Lewis telethon, you're going to school the next day. It's a little different out there for kids now, but it's still a fine time, and it's a wonderful time. Hey, you, know what? you know what? We've got a lot going on with baseball. you got football starting up. you got the final NFL preseason game, so we'll talk about what you want to get into right now. 
But Dan, I'll tell you something. Uh, these Giants just don't go. L l listen, the Giants are the team to beat in the National League right now. Let's just put it. Let's just put the rat on the table. Double D. They are, but it's still taking a while, I think, for people to get their arms around because it's as long as the Dodgers continue to stay pace and the Dodgers continue to put the pressure on, I still think the consensus might be that, you know, we're just waiting for the Dodgers again. Do they have another kick as we head towards the finish line? Uh, there's You can't argue with the, with the Giants, but the Dodgers, because of the makeup and the pedigree and the defending World Series champions – and the fact they got all that star power, I still think that if you were to take a poll from not maybe not once you get beyond the the Bay Area and go throughout the country, I, I would think that that collectively the country still thinks it's the Dodgers that are gonna win this division. Well, they're stupid. That's all I'm gonna say is they're just they're just dumb and they're shallow. And I think Major League Baseball is being dumb and shallow. You know what that tells me? That tells me the national pundits who always seem to think they're on the inside and get it right means they're not doing their job. They're not watching the most interesting team in Major League Baseball right now. The Dodgers are not the most interesting team in Major League Baseball. The Chicago White Sox in the American League are not the most interesting team. The Houston Astros are not the most interesting team. The New York Yankees are close because of the unbelievable tear that wow. they are on. But the Giants from stem to stern have been the story of baseball this year. And nobody, MLB Network, National Pundits, Nobody wants to glom onto them. No, and they're not sexy. They they they're void of Mookie Betts and stars at every position. They got Chris Bryant, and that's about it. I don't know that everyone's bought in. Even I mean, September's less than a week away, and I don't know that people have bought into the way they're playing baseball and whether they think that's sustainable. I still think the sexy pick is out there in Los Angeles. And let's face it, even here in the Bay Area, you know, they lose one game last night, and we're so accustomed to this team just about winning each and every night that, you know, I think it resonates in the back of people's heads that, uh-oh, is this it? You know, is this the beginning of the end? This team with all these sort of players, I knew they couldn't hit. I knew that bullpen wasn't really good. I knew you were pulling us, you were pulling one over on us, Kapler and company. I think everybody's sort of waiting for that bottom to fall out at some point. Maybe, I, you know, maybe I'm the ultimate pessimist. You know what? You got to stop that. Right. Let, let, you got to stop the pessimism. We've got a full body of work from uh, March, April until today that shows that even when they stumble a bit, they get up and not only get up and walk, they start to run again. A stumble from now, uh, every now and again in 162 games is going to happen. But this team has shown that they can rebound, and I fully expect them again to rebound. I don't think a loss like like last night tears them apart. I think they just look at it like that's a day at the office. It's just the way things went. Now it's time for us to go play our charts and we'll play our game because it's been working. You know, you say they're not the sexy pick. You know what? I'm going to use an analogy that we used as kids when it came to, to like, what type of woman were you going to marry? Were you going to marry Ginger or were you going to marry Marianne? Anyone remember <laughs> Gilligan's Island? Were you going to marry Ginger, the smoking hot redhead starlet Hollywood star, or that good homegrown, hardworking, going to be there each and every day, Marianne. You know what? When you tell a woman she's a Marianne, they take it as a negative. It's not a negative. The Giants are Marianne. They're going to be there every day. They're going to be busting their tail. When things are good, they're going to be with you. When things aren't so good, they're going to be with you. The Dodgers are ginger. They're going to be flitting about. <laughs> They're going to be all over the place. They're going to be looking over the, the fence to see what could be better, what's coming down the road. They, their roster is, you know what? Their roster is made of a bunch of superstars, fine and dandy. I'll take Mary Ann eight days a week, brother. That's the Giants right now. I want them to print up the shirts. The Giants, I want Mary Ann in a Giants hat on a T-shirt at 3rd and King. That is the analogy of the league. <laughs> who's, who's the skipper? Arizona you know what? That's a, that's a funny. That, you know what? It's got to be. Is is Farhan Zaidi the skipper, or is the skipper the skipper? Is is Gabe Kapler the skipper? That's a great question. I, I don't I, know. I think that Farhan is the professor, and the skipper is is Gabe Kapler. If we were to go through the entire cast. All right. Who's Gilligan? <laughs> Who's Gilligan? That's going to be the tough one. It's the Arizona Diamondbacks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who Gilligan is. Oh, uh, it's, man. Listen, it's, I, it doesn't every fan or even here in the Bay Area just has that sort of built-in pessimism about your local team. It's not pessimism as, as much as it is this sort of innate level of fear that you want your team to win, but, oh, no, this could happen or the other thing could happen. 
And, and sometimes it's hard to have, and it's not a level of blind faith, but it's hard to, to completely buy in, I think, entirely, because you're always thinking, even as a diehard fan, I mean, you follow the Cubs and the Bears. I mean, isn't a part of you, even when they're winning, like, oh, but this could go wrong? I just think that's sort of, for whatever reason, it's sort of part of the DNA of that fan base. No? Well, listen, I, I think if you're talking the Giants fan base, I think that there is a layer of, and I mean this, I mean this positively, there is a layer of arrogance to the Giants fan base. I don't mean that as a knock. Remember, they're all about championships. You start winning, you win a chip, greatest thing in the world. You win multiple chips, now all of a sudden that's your bar. You're a team that competes for championships. I'm not sure we look at this team the same way we looked at those other teams that were making runs at winning the World Series. I think we're still a little bit uneasy about, hey, how does this churn work? I've had how many different outfielders this year? I've had how many different players on my roster this year? Don't they have the second most used players on a roster this year in Major League Baseball? Yeah, and the I most mean, they're, pitch hits, yeah. Yeah, it, it's it's remarkable at all the different guys. We're used to knowing what the lineup is going to be, one through eight, and then you're throwing a great arm uh, every fourth day, right? Every you know, I mean, uh, for four straight days, you're throwing a great arm. Maybe you got a wonky one in there. But this team is made up completely differently, and I still think we're trying to figure out how to wrap our arms around it, all with the underlying factor of we're pretty arrogant. We, we want World Series. We don't want you just winning your division and beating the Dodgers. Maybe similar to that of the Warriors. We don't need to go down that path Absolutely right now, true. The Warriors Absolutely true. Had that dynastic sort of championship mentality built in. You know, it's, we were talking to Mark Abanez, and Mark Abanez, the legendary sportscaster in these parts for KTVU, and Mark Abanez was comparing this year's Giants team to the 1981 Super Bowl championship 49er team where the 49ers were just this really good team, but nobody bought in because nobody had seen this before. I mean, nobody saw them win with just, you know, they're, despite as good as they were, despite beating the Dallas Cowboys during the regular season, they were still this team that was such a heavy underdog and just sort of crept up on everyone. And he made this analogy that he hasn't seen this sort of, of fanaticism as far as, well, not the fanaticism, but he hasn't seen this sort of dominance done this way when it comes to a Bay Area sports team comparing this year's Giants team to a 1981 Super Bowl team led by Joe Montana the first time, of course, that they did it. And, of course, signified by that catch with Dwight Clark and Joe Montana hooking up in the corner of the end zone. So it was sort of interesting to make that analogy. And I guess the point being is that they're similar – in, the, in that there, there's still the very the, the heavy underdog when you talk about Major League Baseball in the landscape. I bet you if you were to talk to the so-called quote-unquote experts to a man and whoever that is, the consensus would be maybe somebody like the New York Yankees at this point or clearly the Dodgers and maybe the Giants come in at third or even fourth. I think, in fact, I'll give you I'll give you that list in a second. Let's let everyone know that you can be involved here. Stan Devone and Jim Cozumar, we're with you until 1 o'clock this afternoon here on 95.7 The Game. Join us on the text line, 888-957-9570. You can hit us on the phones as well, 888-957-9570. Let's get Neff in Santa Clara. Neff on the Giants, are you buying that uh, they're no better than third in most pundits' minds when it comes to World Series possibilities? How you doing this morning, Neff? I'm doing well. Just over here on my break, working a 12-hour day on a good Saturday. But just, Ooh, way to go, my man. Stay guys. cool. Make sure you drink the water. Yeah, I hear you got to make that money. But, um, yeah, guys, it's just 2010 all over again. You know, us in the Bay Area, we can see it developing because we love our Giants. We see what's, what's brewing. We see what's developing. People out there in the whole world, they don't see it like we see it. And then all of a sudden, when we're going to win the World Series, then it's going to be like, oh, wow, the Giants are this, the Giants are that. Where were you guys a couple months ago? I'm not saying I called this. No one called this season. But we're here now. Let's recognize it, and let's roll with it. Thanks, guys. Love it. Love Way it. to go, Neff. You know, didn't Farhan Zaidi say it himself? He goes, if we'd have made the playoffs last year, and they were in the chase until the final day of the season, if we had made the playoffs last year, no one would be surprised about this year. Dan, I'm not so sure that's true because last year was so weird with 60 games. Yeah. You know, that was bizarre. Even the Dodgers won in that thing. I, I think that that's the big asterisk year. Nobody really, I mean, it's not that anybody cares or, or not to 
devalue or take anything away from the Dodgers. But, I mean, 60 games, baseball's all about that battle of attrition, dog days, and 162 games. And where you're at after 60 is not necessarily where you're going to be at after 100 games, let alone 162. So of all the sports to abbreviate to 60, baseball is almost impossible to do. To the caller's point, you know, he's talking about, you know, where were those fans early on and now some of them are jumping on and there's, you know, that bandwagon aspect. I have no problem with that. If if you're late to the party, expectations change. I get it, but if you're if you're now just waking up and saying, "Hey, man, these Giants are now a first place team that might go to the World Series," I'm going to dust off my cap and head out to the ballpark. Hey, come on down. There's listen. San Francisco is is it's got its diehards, but every city, and especially a city like that of San Francisco, that's got so many transients and such a destination spot, and a lot of people aren't natives to the Bay Area and or San Francisco. You're going to have those people that are going to wake up late into the season and say, "Okay, I'm on board." Nothing wrong with that, I think, in this day and age. That's just you know that's my thought when it comes to the so-called "quote unquote" bandwagon. You know, jump on board whenever you want to jump on board. I think that's fine, but I think we, I, I think we can look at this team. And we can see that they have had the long body of work that's good. Now, if you want to put the microscope on them, Buster comes back after taking a couple of days off because of the knees. It's Here we are approaching. Are we at September yet? No, we're not at September. We're about to hit September. Is there any thought that, you know what, it is a long season, and we've gotten a lot out of the Posies, Crawfords, a little bit out of the Belts, the Longoria. They've all been nicked up a little bit throughout the course of the year. Is there a little bit of nervousness that goes along with, uh, long season, Aging veterans who have given you a ton more than you thought they were going to give you. Maybe the season's going to outlast them. Yeah, that's a good point. And this is the part of the year where, again, just to you know, dust off that level of fear that everyone sort of pointed to. You know, this is quote unquote the dog. Day. And it, I was talking about, I was reading an article of a former major leaguer was saying that that August is the month you want to pay attention to. That the dog days don't necessarily apply to September. It's now. This is why you ran all the extra sprints in spring training. This is why you had a dietitian during the offseason. This is why you lifted all those weights. It's right now you find out those players, those teams that are physically better than the other teams. This is when you separate yourself. It's hot and humid in New York. No one wants to be in Atlanta this time of the year. Sorry, Craig. But it is hot wow. and humid in that part of the world. That's dismissive. And that is where, <laughs> you know, this is what you talk about, you know, being Yikes. physically prepared to play baseball. Because September comes and everybody refocuses because they can see the finish line. He says it's August. August is where you want to be prepared. And as it applies to the Giants, uh, this is an older team, and this is a team that right now where they could be vulnerable. And if they're going to start leaking oil as you head to that finish line, this is when you have to keep an eye on guys like Crawford and Posey. Longoria is not even there. Brandon Belt's in and out of the lineup. So if you're reliant on a core that's like 34 years, 32 years age uh, and above, this is a little bit precarious. And this is what everyone's sort of been pointing at this time of the year. Can you be relevant? Not April and May and June, but how about late August? Now, I love the fact that they added the back Chris Bryant. I love the fact that they added a multi-positional guy in Chris Bryant. But if you want to, again, use the microscope and just take one game snapshots, last night, Gosman starts, gets through six. Then you talk about leaking oil, the bullpen gives it up. Is the bullpen the area where you start to sit back and go, oh, I'm vulnerable right there? Now, I think the bullpen has really been the story. The bullpen is the middle inning relief, and nothing is, is less attractive than talking about middle inning relief. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you, know, well, you know what I mean? Who comes on Sports Talk Radio like, ah, we're talking middle inning relief. Well, there goes the audience. <laughs> it's so effective in the second half of the season. And when you think about the beginning of the campaign where it was all about Gossman, it was about Dee Scalfani, and actually the bullpen was the question mark. Now in the second half, we flipped scripts where Gossman until last night had been scuffling. Dee Scalfani has been on and off the injured list. And, and, and Wood and Cueto haven't been consistent, but it's been that bullpen that has really carried them through. And it's not the back end necessarily with McGee and Rogers, but it's all these middle inning relief guys with Watson and Leon and all these guys that, again, they're not, they're not name grabbers like Crawford and Posey, but really been the story. They stubbed their toe, yes, last night, but I think 
in in large part that it's been that middle inning relief that has really saved this team over the last month or so. If you look at series outside of the division, obviously anytime you play the Padres, the Dodgers, it's going to be an attention grabber. But if you look at series outside of that, is this trip overall a really good barometer for what the Giants truly are? Going to the Mets, who needed to win. The Mets, every series for the Mets is a playoff series right now. They've got an owner who's tweeting about the team, who's tweeting about the clubhouse, who's tweeting that their offense stinks, who's who's doing all the, He's a fan. The, the Mets owner is a fan, but he's putting pressure on that organization. You go in there and you, you swab the deck with the Mets. And now you go to Atlanta where they're also in a now-win win now situation, and they're hot. Dan, they won 16-20. to 20. It, Are these series the kind of barometer series outside of your division where we get a feel for what the Giants really are? It's not only these series, but it's this stretch. They're going 16 consecutive games without a break. And as you mentioned, you're playing New York in New York in that humidity. Then you're playing Atlanta without a day off, and you're taking on one of the best teams in baseball. Then you come home, and oh yeah, you got the Milwaukee Brewers arguably the best pitching staff and a team that you could revisit in the postseason. And then after that, it's the Los Angeles Dodgers. So this will tell a lot as far as whether the the Giants are going to hold off the Dodgers and win this division. We know they're going to the playoffs, but as far as divisional aspirations as champs, we're going to know a lot more after they get through Atlanta and then Milwaukee and Los Angeles. Dan Devone, Jim Cosimo with you here at 95.7 The Game. You can always join us at 888-957-9570, 957 Giants continue to roll. Boy, on the other side, you talk about leaking oil. Oof, green and gold are struggling, man. Oh, wow. Wow. That is a... That is not a good situation over there, and they are hitting the Yankees at exactly the wrong time. And you wonder if you know. I was I w- I had hopes just a week ago, just a week ago with the Bay Bridge series. I had hopes that we were going to see potentially a reunion of '89 because I thought these two teams were ready to roll. Now. I don't even know if the uh, Athletics are going to be able to get themselves into the play-in round. Yeah, no, it's scary, right? They took that Friday night game, and then all of it, they took the Friday night game from uh, the Oakland A's, or from the San Francisco Giants, and then, I, I don't know, I don't know if they've won since then. I mean, no. they go and get swept by Seattle, and they've lost to the New York Yankees, although the Yankees are bust. So, by the way, it was Jim Cozumore that presented that trophy, the Bay Bridge Series, last Sunday on the field out there at the Coliseum. You're welcome. I got one question for you. Yes. How heavy is that thing? That thing is a that thing is a mother. Let me tell you, Gabe Kapler, who's about as fit a manager as you're going to get in Major League Baseball, he was holding it. I start my interview with him, and he goes, "Hey, I'm going to put this down. It's pretty heavy." <laughs> and it is the, the dude. I'm telling you, you can use it as a workout tool. It's that heavy. This is not something that's easy to deal with. But uh, we were it, we had a little laugh about it. We had some fun with it. It's a cool as all get out trophy. It really is neat to see up top. Do you know the story of the old Bay Bridge? There was a troll that was that that they had inside the, I guess you'd call the steelwork, of the original Bay Bridge. Do you know that story? You're, I mean, you're a, a San Francisco yeah, no, guy. Yeah, no, I'm a San Francisco an actual troll. First of all, I thought that was a fictional character. What do you What do you mean? So there was a a um, it was a steel character that was made that was a oh, troll that no they idea. had someone had affixed to the bridge to kind of watch out for the bridge all the time. It wow. was a it's an old uh, maybe it's a wives' tale, but. There is an old troll. There is a story that there is another troll that has been placed somewhere on the new span of the Bay Bridge to carry on that legacy. And if someone knows the story, 888-957-9570, either you can call us and tell us, because I only know bits and pieces. I just found this out last Sunday. I did not know about the troll story. So there was an original troll when they built the bridge. Someone had put it up there and affixed it, you know, through steelwork to kind of watch over people who are traveling over the bridge and to make sure no one, any nefarious, you know, uh, people were coming through. And when they knocked it down, they put a new troll up there. Well, this Bay Bridge trophy that they have, the Tom Pellick trophy, memorial trophy, it inside... They have a troll that's inside the steelwork, the woven steelwork, that if you look inside that bridge, you actually see a troll inside the trophy. It's a really cool homage wow. to the original Bay Bridge. It's an absolutely cool thing to see. So if you ever go to a ball game, I'm sure they have it out somewhere in the concourse at a Giants game. If you ever get to see it, go and take a look inside. You'll see a little miniature troll that's inside the Bay Bridge trophy. 
And as I understand it, the trophy is made out of the actual former Bay Bridge, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. In fact, it was the great Brody Brazil, and it was Ahmed Farid, who now works with NBC in in Stamford, your old home. They had to go to the state legislature to get the okay to get scrap metal from the original uh, East Bay span of the Bay Bridge in order to have an artist come together to make that trophy and weave it in like it was a piece of the – it is a piece of, but it, to make it look like the same um, ironwork of the Bay Bridge. That's wow. pretty cool. Wow. Yeah. A lot of work went into it. I know a lot of people think that we just kind of threw it together. No, there was a lot of thought and effort. And that whole troll story, which I did not know – from years back. That's incredible. I know. That's a cool homage that they paid to everyone who's got it. So good good on them, and it's a cool trophy. Now, the the story to that is it's heavy as all get out. Yeah. It is heavy because it's made out of the original iron and steel. So that's pretty cool. Um, but I'll tell you this. You want to know something? Gabe Kapler gets it. I know he came into San Francisco and his opening press conference did not go well. He had some issues with Philadelphia. He had some issues when he was with the Dodgers, how he handled an off-the-field situation. And a lot of people were down on him. That is one, like, squared-up dude. Looks you in the eye, shakes your hand, meets people, understands the moment. He knew what it meant to have A's Giants going at the Coliseum that weekend. Hey, listen, certainly games in your division mean more. Certainly no series is really bigger than any other particular series, but he understood the moment for Bay Area baseball, and he treated it professionally. Well, I'll tell you, he's an upstanding dude. That Kapler is a great guy, man. I hear a lot of good things about him. And obviously, beyond baseball, we know what he's been able to do this year as a manager, and he's soon to be the manager of the year in Major League Baseball. But people talk about that's the one guy locally, whether it's a manager or a celebrity, whether it's sports or what have you, that you would want to sit down and have a beer with. His knowledge when it comes to music, his knowledge when it comes to art, when it comes to culture, his background, he apparently is well-versed in a multitude of areas and is just a really fascinating guy that, that goes well beyond baseball. And again, you wouldn't think so. And the optics never do this guy well. The chewing the gum, the half-shaved beard, even the way he walks, we all arrive at these conclusions. But to your point, I think that people that are able to you know, actually meet the guy and talk to him a little bit, apparently he's fascinating, Jim. I'll tell you, he was a, an impressive uh, person to meet the other day. And I, you know, it, it's funny. You know this because you've worked in the business for a long time. I've worked in the business a long time. You get in the business and you start to root for people more than you root for teams. You know, there are upstanding people. There are ones who treat you right. There are ones who treat you well. There are ones who go about their business the right way, and you tend to root for them. I'll tell you, you know, he either he's the greatest con man on the planet or he's a good dude, but he was a really good dude. Bob Melvin, great dude. How do you not root for Bob Melvin and his teams? Great, upstanding guy who has a heart. I'll tell you, we're pretty blessed with a lot of a lot of good uh, leaders in this town. Everyone loves Steve Kerr. Kyle Shanahan is a guy who people think highly of. Um, probably the one that nobody knows the most is uh, Bogner down with uh, with the uh, Sharks, right? That's true. That's probably the one that people don't know the most. And Shanahan might be still somewhat of an outlier at this point. Maybe, uh, maybe he's. Although I hear he's sort of a guy's guy. And I was talking to Banyas about that as well. He said he's the sort of guy that, you know, he'll put his hat on backwards. He's a real guy sort of guy. He'll have a beer with you, that's that sort of person. He listens to really, you know, he's into hip-hop and, and that sort of thing, relatable to the players. But I guess if you were to stack him up to the before-mentioned Kerr, Bob Melvin, as well as Gabe Kapler, I think Kyle Shanahan might be sort of out on an island a little bit compared to those others. All right, fair enough. we got to step aside, take our first time out of the day when we continue. You know, Dan came up with something about where the Giants would lay if you were going to list your top five teams in Major League Baseball when it comes down to how you would – rank them as World Series worthy. I want to get into that because I think the Giants should be, in the National League, team number one. All right, And I know it's a floating scale because every week things change. A week ago, I might have had the A's in that list. Now, after losing six straight, you no longer have it. I want to put my little list together. Dan will maybe throw his list together, and I'd love to hear from you. 888-957-9570. 888 957 Dan Devone. Curiosity Stream has thousands of documentary films and shows available on demand on any device. We're the Netflix for nerds, the Hulu for history buffs, the Disney Plus for the scientist in us. There sure are a lot of streaming services, aren't there? 
Curiosity Stream is the one you definitely need if you're the type to nature dock and chill, if you're an armchair astronaut, if you prefer physics to psychics, or perhaps you know a precocious paleontologist. Go to CuriosityStream.com to learn more and sign up today. Coming September 1st, Rewind 9-11. Today we've had a national tragedy. An incredible plane crash into the World Trade Center. A look back at the tragedy of that day. Another explosion has taken place at the Pentagon. It became very apparent that what was happening was terrorism. Terrorism. Fox News presents... Rewind 9-11. People who knocked these buildings down will hear all of us soon. Listen on Odyssey. Jim Cosimo with you until 1 on 95.7 The Game. Now back to 95.7 The Game. That's a hot guitar lick, there's no question about it. One of the great songs of all time. I may put in a request, I know it's a few days after the fact. We gotta play some Rolling Stones in honor of the great Charlie Watts. The passing of the greatest drummer and the greatest band of all time. Thank you. Who's your best lead vocalist? You got Jagger. I always go Freddie Mercury, but I don't know. Well, you know that yeah. Boy, that's gonna be a tough call because that Freddie Mercury, obviously, if you're doing a Mount Rushmore, you got Mercury, you've got uh, obviously, Mick Jagger. I think Bono might be on oh, the list. Wow. I didn't think about Bono. Bono might be on the list. And who else would you put up there? Um, of lead vocalist? David Lee Roth. Hello. Oh, yeah. No? Yeah, I'll go David Lee Roth. I just, for whatever reason, he didn't jump into my head. <laughs> I was a big fan of the spandex bands back in the uh, 80s and 90s. So. Roger Daltrey? Nah. All right. Nah, he's not floating my boat. David Byrne? You know what? David Byrne talking heads, yes. David Byrne now, no. David Byrne talking heads. Oh, that's a good call, yeah. You go watch his stuff in the Stop Making Sense movie where they create a stage from nothing. If you if anyone has if you if you love music, Talking Heads movie, Stop Making Is it Stop Making Sense? Is that the one where it starts with a blank stage? And he comes out with just a cassette recorder, in essence, and a guitar. And from that point on, he starts doing songs, and they start building a set until the rest of his band and backup singers and the set is up, and then they continue the concert. It's wow. a really wow. phenomenal movie of music. So that's just a little tip uh, for you music fans that's out there. Awesome. I, I, I might lean towards Eddie Vedder, actually, if I think about it. I was, I was a big Pearl Jam guy. All right. All right, that's You're not interesting. Down with Eddie? You know, um, I think that boy, I'll tell you. Why and the guy's name, the Foo Fighter guy. His name is escaping me. Why? Uh, he was he was yeah, the, yeah, wasn't yeah. he the drummer? Yeah, yeah. Who is that? And the lead vocals for Foo Fighters. He's the he's I I can picture the guy. Uh, that's killing me. I know. This is this is driving me nuts. Um, from the 925, Adele is on the list for greatest Flea? Vocalist. Adele. It's not Flea. No, come on. Who's the guy? Hey, back in the studio. Get on the Google machine. Lead vocalist Foo Fighters. How do you guys not know the Foo Fighters? They're only the greatest band going today. Uh, no? Well, I don't know. I'm looking through the glass. 888 Are they, what are they, watching, uh... Uh, are they currently watching the NFL Network or Craig they're on Liverpool Chelsea right now? Oh, okay. Craig bought donuts again, so they they haven't put their head up in the last. Let's they, go Reds. They're like their heads in a trough. Craig comes nice. up with these donuts from where do you get these things from, Craig? There's a place called actually it's called really it's really Joey Donuts in uh, Richmond. So I grabbed it on the way in, and they open like at 3 a.m. It's one of those little mom and pop places. Uh, it just hits the spot, so I had to hit. You know, I was looking out for my guys today. All right, David Grohl. Dave Grohl. That's it. How do you guys not know Dave Grohl? <laughs> that is so sad. What do they teach you guys? That's like in the movie School of Rock when uh, they're trying to. He's asking the kids about their rock knowledge and they know nothing about it. What are they, you've never gotten the let out? Come on. 
I got to go back and watch that movie. That's, that's a classic. That's a good pull right there. I, did, that was a, I, was, I remember I watched that movie as a red eye, and that's the worst movie to watch as a red eye because the opening scene, when he tries to crowd surf and nobody catches him, <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing way too hard. And everybody in the plane is looking at me like, dude, shut up. Like, we're trying to sleep. That movie is a classic. Jack Black is a genius in that movie, and so is, are all the young, uh, 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 you know, performers in that thing and, and uh we lost one of them the the drummer from that movie passed away this year in a horrible bicycle accident well wow. you know who they have i just a matter of fact speaking of google so i just googled this they got freddie mercury at two jagger at one robert plant at three mm. wow that's that's i don't know i don't know is bono on the list uh no debbie harry wow um i like debbie harry i was a big fan were you real jim morrison yep. at 10 and uh, I, I don't see uh, Rod Stewart. Wow. All right. I'm a big Rod Stewart guy. Chris Cornell from Soundgarden, according to the 510. Thank you, Dave, Gro uh, Dave Grohl from the 510. I don't see has got to be on here, but I don't see him. Any love for John Fogarty? Not for me. John Fogarty. <laughs> Kurt Cobain comes in at four. I'm a crooner myself. Hey, this is from the 510. Dave Grohl of the Foo Fighters. All right, good job. But then he said, Pearl Jam opened for the Stones at the Oakland Coliseum. Is one of the... Uh, yes. Uh, one, I can't understand what they're saying, but it says, go Terps. So is that the concert where Pearl Jam, or it was raining, and th I think three or four guys get on stage in the security outfits, and they started to kind of mop the stage? <laughs> that I don't know, but I know Pearl Jam had opened for... The Stones, not only in in the Bay Area, but they've done that previously. Uh, that I don't know, though. Um, here, w no, here's the no, but the, the the finish to that story is some guys got on stage. I think this is the Pearl Jam story. The guys got on stage and they were squeegeeing the stage, and then it turned out it was the band Pearl Jam. They took the uh, security outfits off and they started to play. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's the story I heard, and if and if someone knows that one, I'd love to hear it. So. Uh, we've got some other stuff, 888-957-9570, to, to clean up what we started with earlier today. And that was, how about this, uh, which is classic text line. Take your Bay Bridge trophy and split hat and hit the pike. <laughs> <laughs> a great start to the day. From the 510, it's a gargoyle, not a troll, that's up in the Bay Bridge. And then from the 415, uh, they said this. Once upon a time, the Bay Bridge troll was placed in a secret location to watch over us all. So that's the story of this troll that's up there on the bridge, or gargoyle, if you will. So, um, nice. Is there nice. a difference between the two? Um, uh, that's a good question. I thought, I agree. It doesn't, a, well, as a gargoyle, a troll is there to, I don't know. That's a good question. That's a, that's a hot, you know what, we'll, uh, let's uh, tweet it out. Hey, tweet it out, Evan. Uh, what, is, what do you go with, a gargoyle or troll? We're All right, 957 the, the game. At the game, 957, whatever our Twitter handle is. Let's get back on the Giants. 888-957-9570, 888-957-9570. Oh, there is one here for Bruce Springsteen, which I think you would uh, you'd, you'd go with that vote, right? Yeah, you can't stand him. No, I just happen to have somebody, is, a friend of mine is actually his physician, so we had, I, I had some really good seats, went to the concert, and they came back, and I told you and Whitey about it, and you guys went nuts because you hate the guy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't necessarily. I wouldn't say I, I'm. I'm musically dislike the guy. I wouldn't say like I like if he came over. I'm sure I'd want to you know sit down and have a cocktail with him. But I hate you. <laughs> maybe maybe it's a music hate. So I think he's a one trick pony. Yeah. That's just my deal. It's the same thing all the time. Uh, all right, let's get back into Major League Baseball. So my contention is in the National League, the team to beat is the San Francisco Giants. They're eighty three and forty five. They're two and a half up on the Dodgers. And as hot as the Dodgers were, right, they've won eight of ten. Everyone's like, oh, boy, here come those Dodgers. They're going to catch us. They're going to catch Giants have won seven of ten. Yeah. Giants are still up two and a half. They've got the best record in baseball. So with that as the backdrop, why don't we – if you put a list together of the teams to beat, and it's a floating list, in the National League, without question, it's the Giants number one. All right, so let's not let's not say anything else. 
Number well, two. Can I push back on that? Go ahead. Okay, so are we taking a look? Are we qualifying this? It's the total body of work or the best team in baseball right now as we come to you on this Saturday morning? Right now, as we come to you on Saturday morning. So next week when we're together on a Saturday morning, we could do the list. The Giants could lose five straight. They could be in the wild card, and we could kick back and say, well, wait a minute now. They're in the wild card? Stink. Now they're not the best. Now they're not the team to beat in the National League. But well, I, as of this moment, the body of work we've seen up until today, they're the team to beat in the National League. Okay, so you're talking about the body of work throughout the entire season, not just the team that's playing right now. Because I would put the Yankees at number one. If we're talking about right now, today, the best team in baseball, I think the Yankees are are playing better ball than that of the Giants. And that's a great call because I have them as number two. Okay. And the only reason I put the Giants at number one, again, knowing they've won seven of their last ten. And the Yankees are smoking out. What are they? Have they won eleven in a row or twelve in a row? Twelve after last. You night, know what? Yeah. It's thirteen after last. Thirteen night, for out loud. Thirteen after oh, you're last right. night. That's two in a row against the A's. So yeah, thirteen. Wow. Yeah, the A's have just become a battering ram yeah, for every terrible. other team in Major League Baseball. It's just it's hurting my heart to see because I want to see green and gold, orange and black coming together in October, early November. But I, I would, and I understand that you would have Yankees at number one because they are smoking hot. I still put the Giants on top of them because I think they're the team. And, and, and I was doing my list all National League first, all American League second, but I would agree with you on, on where the Yankees are right now. Who's coming in three and third? You know what? I think the Milwaukee Brewers are a good team, but I think Tampa Bay is about as secretive a great team in Major League Baseball as you're going to find. The Tampa Bay Rays are the long-standing version of this year's San Francisco Giants. And the Tampa Bay Rays, no one will ever talk about them. You can't name three guys on their roster. And here they are with the best record in the American League. So while the Yankees are playing the best baseball right now, winning 13 straight, I'd say Giants, Yankees, Rays are my one, two, three. That is such a good call. And maybe I'm a perfect example of somebody that thinks they follow baseball and knows sports, and I keep an eye, obviously, on what's happening. I had no idea that they were leading that division by four games. As much as we talk about the Yankees, even the Red Sox dominated the headlines for so long. And the Yankees, of course, were such underachievers in the beginning of the season. Everybody's saying, well, what's gone wrong? And out they've won 13 in a row. But all the while, flying under the wire, they're the Rays atop the heap. That's really incredible. Triple eight nine five seven nine five seven zero. Let's grab some phone calls in here. You can hit us on the text line as well. Same number eight 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 nine five seven nine five seven zero. Out to Sonoma we go. Valerie on the Giants, but more importantly on rock bands. Valerie, uh, aside from oh, the Stone, okay. everyone else is playing for the silver. The Stones are the best. Val, who had the song Valerie? Who? I am. Yes, thank you, thank you, Valerie. Yes, I I'm on the air, you guys. Okay, what I do have to say, my. I just had my 59th birthday, and one of my best friends, Tamsin, got me a Brandon Crawford. Yes, my heart beats fondly. Love him. Oh, my God. Can't even. <laughs> I just love him. Got me his his scarf for my birthday. You know, he does the scarf on yep. the forehead. Yep. Oh, my God. And she <laughs> sent it to me for my birthday. Okay. So when you guys were saying, I when you were saying the Foo Fighters, for mm-hmm. some reason, I thought of Goo Goo Dolls. Do you guys know the Goo Goo Dolls? I love the Goo Goo Dolls. Yes, uh, the Goo Goo Dolls yeah. have one of the great songs of all time, which was, is it Iris? Is that the name of the song? I, I call it is Iris. Know. I love them too, though. But but Charlie Watts is really sad, and I didn't know the name of the drummer. But my dad, oh my God, Rolling so- Grateful Dead, my parents were deadheads. Mm. They went to the, Hippies. what's called, Winter... When, Winterland, they mm-hmm. went to Winterland for years. They would drop my sister and I off at my grandparents' house in San Rafael, and they would do the, the Winterland weekend. And wow. My dad was, they had, he had Grateful Dead. When, when Grateful Dead was on, my, my dad died in 2007 from a, um, stomach surgery that went, went wrong. Oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I, thank you. But, and I look like him, and of course I miss him, but... He and I, anyway, I songs that I think of, songs, he just, anyway, my dad really opened my mind to Rod Stewart. I just heard Maggie May this morning. Anyway, I'm, I'm a, and I'm a Beatles freak completely. 
you guys are are completely awesome. My friend Tamson got got me into Giants baseball. She and I, she lives in Nevada, and she and I watch the Giants game on the phone. And we'll like anyway. I'm also really happy because I I was just talking to her yesterday. You guys, every time I'm like I'm wondering about is it is, is it Kapler the new manager? Is, is that his name, Kapler? Yep, Gabe Kapler. So, so cool. He's so great. Anyway, and whenever I tune into you guys, I always find out exactly what I need. Like you guys were telling me about Kapler. I'm like, this is awesome. You guys, I I love listening to you. You guys are just, thank you. You, you. you guys rock. Thank you. We'll take that. You're so sweet. Thanks for Jay. Hey, feel free to call anytime. Always love talking to new fans of a team of the game, and we really appreciate the fact that you're able to get a little something out of what we're trying to do here. Sometimes, Dan, I don't know what we're trying to do, but she's getting something out of it. Yeah, that works. The dead going back in the day. Hippies. I don't take you as a deadhead type. No, but hippies. they were they- <laughs> dirty, dirty hippies, probably wearing. Uh, probably wearing uh, Birkenstocks. Oh, definitely. You know, wa- walking in dirt with their Birkenstocks, with their dirty feet. They don't get pedicures, <laughs> so they got that extra thick layer of skin around their heels. I know you're talking about, you dirty hippies. They were, but that was an institute, because you people would not just go to those things. It wasn't just about the music. It was an event, man. You go play Ultimate Frisbee. I wasn't a deadhead, but... Hacky but sack, you a hacky, hacky sack, sack guy, big hacky sack guy. Bob Weir, Jerry Garcia. I mean, they were just the, the institution, but I could not see Jim Cosimore. <laughs> no. <laughs> I out with no. the dead. In fact, I wrote a, a, a movie um, treatment about a band because i think the one of the biggest sham bands of all time are the grateful dead it's all about love love one another peace everything's great we're all in this together this big socialist society in their prime they were the highest grossing band in the world oh wow i'm telling you that band was the biggest group of capitalists that have ever walked the rock earth under the under the banner of look at us all together here just for love what a sham band. It's sham mockery. It's a sham and a mockery of music. So and, it wasn't about the the love and the peace. All no, that, like, it wasn't. It was about the greenbacks, but pri- thank you. Jets, thank you very much. Private jets and Swiss bank accounts. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> and then, oh, you know, and uh, uh, Jerry Garcia sadly passes away. But lo and behold, for years, we're getting brand new uh ties with his artwork on them where is all this artwork coming from that dude faked his death he's living on an island somewhere and he's producing more and more stuff you heard it from me first living right there with elvis and bruce lee who apparently never died and uh tupac crazy dude crazy come on two a tell me tupac's not on the same island (laughs) well why would tupac fake his death i don't know if there's any incentive there someone can help me with that didn't it, it don't you go back and listen to his music, and you, he telegraphs how he's going to fake his death, right? Tupac died on, on the strip, the strip yeah. in front of like hundred, everyone <laughs> after a Tyson fight in front of hundreds of thousands of people, and no one knows anything about where he went. Dude, Come on. am I right or wrong? He faked his death. You are, you can tell you watched the Chappelle skit when, when, it, when, it, when it does the whole Tupac and Tupac still has songs coming out. Talk about, hey, see that yep. girl in the red at mm-hmm. the club. Like, yeah, no, he's gone, bro. He's gone. Uh, you ever curse Rock's bit on that when they're talking about his death? Like when someone else, when a white celebrity gets shot, they find that person. <laughs> this guy got shot on the strip and that guy got away. He has a new album coming out every five years. Yeah. Exactly. Dude, come on. We all know what's going on. Everything's a sham. Everything you see, people don't believe it. Don't trust it. Give me some phone calls in here. Triple eight nine five seven nine five seven zero. Waiting on the phone lines patiently is our friend Mitch in New Jersey. Mitch, thanks for using the Odyssey app. We appreciate it. Try to stay. Uh, try. I, is it going to be hot and humid where you are today, Mitch? Well, it's cooled off since yesterday. All right. Good. Good for you. I do want to go next seven days. Is like four percent chance of rain. It's like uh, we're living, I'm living in Seattle, East Coast style. Love it. Um, but the best concert I think I've ever seen was a uh, Springsteen in the 80s at his uh, Born USA tour. Jersey. That was in center field, the old Giants thing. How far uh, are you from South Freeland? Side. I'm sorry? How far are you from Freeland? Uh, Freehold? Oh, that's Freehold, that's sorry, his hometown. Uh, oh, um, a little further. Okay. He's more, he's more on the coast. 
I'm with you from Staten Island. If you have any questions on New Jersey geography, Mitch is on the line until the top of the hour, so 888 <laughs> Go ahead, Mitch. Don't answer for, dire- for direction. I might get you both. Um, I, I would say the Dodgers are playing pretty well. I, I mean, we're going to get a curse ship back. That's the only guy I'm waiting for. I hope um, the creek there, uh, Trevor, we had no business signing in the first place. I hope he never gets a chance to play anyway. Let him uh, be looking in, sitting down, looking in like most most of us people. But I think the Dodgers. Uh, I, I thought they'd be in first place by now, but the Giants are. I mean, how are you doing it? I mean, I don't know. It has something to do with the, the ex GM that you have. He came from the Dodgers. Uh, for hard, I believe his name is. Um, but um, had uh, Posey play a whole season, he'd be talking our MVP for him. All right, thanks, Mitch. We appreciate it. Um... You know what, I I, uh, I got to be honest, I couldn't understand a lot of what he was saying. I don't know if he was using one of those phones, it's like a, you know, it's like a cat phone or something that has the, the cord to it or anything, but I couldn't hear a lot of that. Well, he's in Jersey, sitting on his lawn in the middle of the day having cocktails, that's why. Man, you no, know what, that's you, good living, Mitch, hey, you and know, we appreciate you listening. But to his point, yeah, we love Mitch, he's he's a regular here on Saturday. Yeah. Mitch, I was taking a shot at, you're from Jersey, you can handle it, my man, I love you. But, you know, he was talking about... The Dodgers, you sort of, yeah, I get Tampa Bay. We can't leave the Dodgers out of that list. I know that they're in second place. I know they're the rivals, but that team, I mean, they're doing everything they can to walk down those Giants, and I don't think we've heard the last of them. That, that, the way they're playing baseball, that's, that's got to be in the top. If they're not three, they're definitely four. Definitely four. And, and I, I, you know what, I would argue, I would push back a little because I think the Milwaukee Brewers are a pretty darn good team as well, and I think they've been well-constructed, and I think they have a chance, another chance to make a pretty big run. Can you imagine the city of Milwaukee getting an NBA wow. crown and then the Brewers making a run and getting a World Series championship? And that would put all the pressure in the world on A. a. Ron Rodgers to bring the Packers a Super Bowl, and he better produce this year after the wacky offseason that he had. But I will tell you, Boy, I might ah, – the Dodgers are playing well. I'd probably go Dodgers 4, Brewers 5, probably on that. Can I real quick get in a call before we got to take a break? My friend Brandon is out at Boundary Oaks. That's one of my favorite golf courses to play out in Walnut Creek. It's a great track out there. Uh, Brandon, welcome into 95.7 The Game. When are you going to let me on the track, brother? Hey, good morning. Um, you, you know the man. You know how to get on out there. I know. And, uh, and speaking of the man, his head's probably spinning, talking bad about the dead right now if he heard it. <laughs> he is absolutely huge deadhead. But uh, I'm not going to say anything. And uh, lastly, you got, I think you got to put Tom Petty on that list. Oh, good call. You know, I think he's underappreciated. I, I think Tom Petty is you're, – you're absolutely right. Petty gets, to this, gets into the discussion – Boy, talk about it, someone leaving us too soon, huh? Oh, that Wasn't hurt. that guy in his early 60s when he passed? That I'm not sure. Free Fallen, one of the best songs ever. He's got a lot of good ones, man. He's got a lot of really great ones. I'll, I'll buy that one, Brandon. I'll take a little Tom Petty on that. Hey, you want to make up with this, this whoever it is that's getting you on that track? You might want to walk back some of that stuff about the dead, especially when it comes to golf. You're not willing to, to go after the golf on a, or go after the dead on a take if it's going to jeopardize you <laughs> <laughs> and and your green fees are you i know that's a good call you know right. but hey you know that's what i do it's a hot take central right here <laughs> um it's the same thing same thing with the beatles anything after their second album is trash <laughs> first two albums fantastic the early stuff is good uh, she loves me yeah 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 that's what i want to hear don't give me the sergeant pepper crap don't give me the psychedelic don't give me the yellow submarine junk Give me the early stuff, okay? Oh, you're beautiful. So when we continue today, we want more Charlie Watts, all right? Because I know this, you know, we're going to a little homage to the great drummer from the greatest rock and roll band in the history of the genre, all right? I know a lot of you like Bill Haley and the Comets or whoever it is, because I like to give as many references outside of our demographic <laughs> that I can. <laughs> it is the worst. We've got more to discuss. Uh, we threw that half hour away. Yet still we had some fun, and thank you very much for listening in today. We got more giant stuff we want to get into today. Uh, what do we? What do we have? Um, boy, what do we have? You know, we got Niner stuff we got to get to. Let me finish off Giants and we continue because they've got some off-season questions that they need answered, including what do you do with pending free agents? 
That's all coming up. We'll do that and then transition into the 49ers who get the Las Vegas Raiders in the final preseason game. Do you like Raiders and Niners going back at it? Plus, we'll hit the text line. It's all coming up with Dan Devone and Jim Cozumore on 95.7 The Game. Curiosity Stream has thousands of documentary films and shows available on demand on any device. We're the Netflix for nerds, the Hulu for history buffs, the Disney Plus for the scientist in us. There sure are a lot of streaming services, aren't there? Curiosity Stream is the one you definitely need if you're the type to nature doc and chill, if you're an armchair astronaut, if you prefer physics to psychics, or perhaps you know a precocious paleontologist. Go to CuriosityStream.com to learn more and sign up today. Coming September 1st, Rewind 9-11. Today we've had a national tragedy. An incredible plane crash into the World Trade Center. A look back at the tragedy of that day. Another explosion has taken place at the Pentagon. It became very apparent that what was happening was terrorism. Terrorism. Fox News presents... Rewind 9-11. People who knock these buildings down will hear all of us soon. Listen on Odyssey.